Would you turn with me to John chapter 1? The Word became flesh. It's going to be in John 1.14. Now, I want everybody to stand up. Please, just stand up for a minute. Now, if you're going to get any closer to heaven than you are right now, I want you to stand on your tiptoes. Okay, now reach up and see if you can get it. No. Okay, you can sit back down. That was a total failure and a bust. Nobody in here reads heaven. And so, God came down from heaven because we couldn't get to him, so he came down to us. John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Here he is, God himself in heaven, and he comes down and becomes flesh and dwells among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. So we're going to behold his glory. Now watch this. We beheld his glory as of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. And so God is going to come down here. We can't get there, so he's going to come down here. Now, I want you to turn to the right with me to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. We'll come back and look at this Christmas story in a minute, but Colossians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Chapter 2, verse 9. For in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily whoa now that's saying something for in Christ dwells all would you underline all and then if you will circle underline fullness all the fullness not just part of God all of God dwells where in Christ bodily So what it says is is that when God came down from heaven, not only was he born a baby, he came and the word became flesh, and he, he was born a baby, but in that baby, in that particular baby named Jesus, and by the way, the word means salvation. Yeshua in the Hebrew, Jesus in the Greek, and both of them mean salvation, God saves. But not only was God born in the flesh, but it says all of the, all, all of the fullness of the Godhead. That's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit dwells in Him. How? Bodily. In that little baby, which grew up to be a man. Now, how in the world is that going to be possible? Well, in every one of you, Every single one of us, there are strands of DNA, millions, billions. But on that helix, that ladder that you're looking at right there, that twist up, on every one of those rungs of a ladder are genes. And in that little strand of DNA that is microscopic that you can't see with your eye, dwells every single characteristic of you bodily. Every single gene that determines who you are is on that little bitty helix there bodily. It determines everything that you are on that little gene right there, on that little DNA right there. And all the genes are there. Now, we're going to take that physically, and we're going to use that as an illustration of what God did in Jesus. He took all the, the characteristics of the Godhead, not just God, but the Godhead, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit are in the Son of God, Jesus, in that baby. All the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. 
Now, that's going to do something for us. We can't reach God in our little bitty trines to reach God. We can't do it. And so God comes down here to meet with us. How many of you have ever used one of these? Now, I'm talking about to cook with. You, you know what this is? Do you recognize it? Now, Jeannie's got a great big one I couldn't carry, so I left that at home. But I brought the smaller one. When you cook in this, and when you get through cooking in this, what you have to do is you've got to wash this. Now, this is just an old black pot. However, it cooks some good stuff in here. Jeannie cooks cornbread in these things. Her cornbread is sweet. And then I pour molasses over it. This, this old black pot right here cooks some mighty fine stuff. However, every time we use this black pot, we have to wash it. Now, I don't know about you, but most of these black pots don't have any smooth, slicky stuff in them. Teflon. And so you have to take a scrubber, and you have to take some soap, and you scrub on this pot, and you scrub, and you scrub, and you scrub, and you scrub on this pot until it comes out, and then you wash it. Rinse it. But that's not the end of the story. Then you've got to put it on some fire of some kind, and you've got to dry it out, you've got to heat it up. Because if you know anything about cast iron, after you've washed it, then you've got to put some oil in this. However, you've got to heat it so that the metal expands, the pores expand, that when you put the oil in it, it absorbs the oil. Then when it cools off, it's absolutely full of oil, and we call it seasoned. Did you know that's what God sent Jesus here for? Is so that we could be seasoned Christians. Now, we're going to look at this. We are nothing in the world but old black pots. However, we are good for something. We cook some mighty good stuff in here. We've got the testimony of Jesus Christ in us, and God uses us for good works. However, when we get through, there's always some junk left in the pan. And so God is going to have to wash us. Now, why in the world did he come down here? Turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Jesus came to wash us in himself so that we can be useful. So that we can have some hope. So that we can be full of joy. So that we can be seasoned. Now the first thing we're going to look at, number one, is the fleshly word. We're going to look at the fleshly word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word is tabernacled. And the word... Logos. John uses the word logos for word. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but logos in the Greek was the deepest word in the Greek language. Logos, the word. The Greeks believed that there was a logos that was the beginning of the universe. Before there was ever any universe here, they believed that there was a logos out there. Now, the Greeks were not Christians. The Greeks were pagan. They were horrible. But they believed in their philosophy that there was a logos that was out there someplace that created the universe. They called it the prime principle, the beginning of philosophy, the beginning of thought. And they called it the Logos. Now, he's going to take this word Logos, and he's going to say in verse 14, the word Logos became what? Flesh. The word became flesh. Now, immediately, he's got the whole Roman world. He's got the whole Greek word, world. When he uses the word Logos, and he says, and it became flesh... And everybody went, what? How can the Logos be a person? And John says, At the, the very prime principle of the universe 
that started everything, it became flesh. Now all the Greeks and the Romans go, okay, you've got my attention. And what did it do? Well, it dwelt among us. It's here. It dwells among us. And Colossians, he says, this is the fullness of the whole Godhead. And it's in that little bitty baby. It's in Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1. How did that happen? Here it comes. He's going to tell us. It came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. All right, now I hear a baby, right? I hear a baby. I see a baby over there. Christmas time. And the shepherds and the wise men came to look at a... And God said, what you're looking at is God. And this, this baby is going to save all of the world, past, present, and future. And you're looking at that baby, and you're looking at that baby, and you think, mm, okay, I'm good with that. Fill me in. <laughs> so here it comes. Here, here it comes. Came to pass in those days. The one had decree out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this census first took place while Quirinius was governor of Cyril. And all went to be registered to be taxed, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was the house and lineage of David. Now, all of a sudden, we've got politics involved in this story. We've got government involved in this story. We've got the world involved in this story. We got pagans involved in this story. So it wasn't while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, laid him in a feed trough because there was no room in the motel. So they're in a stable someplace because there's the animals. The only place you have a feed trough is where there are animals. If you got a cat bowl, you got a cat. If you got a doggy door, you got a dog. If you've got a manger, you've got animals, you've got a stable. And there was no room in, in the inn, there's no room in the motel. And so they stayed in the stable. And there were in the same country, what? Shepherds. Shepherds abiding out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Now, what you're about to see is heaven and earth come down together. What Christmas is, is the Word became flesh. The Logos, the prime principle... The acting principle of the universe that established all of the earth and the universe and people, the very essence of wisdom itself became a person. It became flesh. It became here on earth. And what you're about to see is heaven and earth come together. Now, where was this baby born? Okay, Bethlehem. Where's the baby going to live? Where's the baby going to stay? Where did she put the baby? Okay, the baby is born, and she wraps him up in clothes. This is God. This is God himself. This is the Godhead bodily. She's going to wrap him up in some swaddling clothes. You know what swaddling is? It's wrapped up. And it can be a blanket. It can be strips of cloth. She's just going to wrap him up tight. And they're going to put him in a feed trough in a stable. Oh, isn't that cute? Unless it's yours. Okay, now are you going to take that baby and you're going to put him in a trash can tonight because there's no room at your house? No, you look over there at Grandma. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, 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 no. However, this baby got put in a feed trough in a manger in the wintertime, in a stable. But look at what happened. Watch heaven. Watch heaven. Verse 9. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord... Now, who's going to stand before these shepherds? 
Who's going to stand before the shepherd? An angel of the Lord. Now, what do angels look like? Especially at night. <laughs> They're going to light up the sky. He's going to stand before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Now, this is the word Shekinah. The Shekinah in the Hebrew shines round about them, and they were greatly afraid. They were sore afraid. They were so afraid that it hurt. And the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to the whole world. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. It's the Messiah of God. This will be a sign unto you. You're going to find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a feed trough. Now, there weren't very many of them like that that night. And suddenly, finish it with me. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. How many? All of heaven opened up. The reason there's a multitude of angels is because they're all, they're all wanting to see. And all of heaven opened up. Now, when you put heaven there, you've got eternity. You've got everlasting, everlasting. And you've got earth down here, and you've got all of heaven up there, and you've got the shepherds down here taking care of the sheep, and you've got all of the glorious angels up there, and they're singing. And they're saying, Glory to God in the highest. Praising God. And on earth. Okay, now wait a minute. Where's God? In the highest. What about down here on earth? Peace. Goodwill towards men. And on earth. So this is heaven. And this is earth. And it comes together. God comes together with earth in one night, right there, bang! And Jesus is born. And now you've got all the fullness of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, born that night in that little baby, and heaven and earth came together. The lowest on earth and the highest in heaven, and it came together right there. Boom! Suddenly. The fleshly word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, that is so cool. Heaven and earth. Now, that's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is not just forever and ever. Christmas is also for earth. Jesus came that we might be saved and be forever and ever with God. But he didn't just come forever and ever. He came for us down here on earth also. Down here in this dirt pile we call earth. And that's the fleshly Word. But I want to look at Another one, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 13. I want to look at the water word. The fleshly word, the water word, the word water. John chapter 13, go to your right to John chapter 13. Jesus gets to be a man. He's got some apostles. One of them's name is Peter. We want to look at not only did Jesus come to take us to heaven, Jesus came to live with us down here. All the fullness of the Godhead, heaven can't hold him, and earth can't hold him. He fills them all up. So not only are we talking about heaven, but we're also talking about earth down here. We're going to talk about not only the fleshly word, we're going to talk about the word water, water word. In John chapter 13, verse 4. Five, Jesus is going to wash their feet. Remember we talked about the highest in heaven and the lowest on earth? This is as low as you can get right here on earth. Verse 4, he rose from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and he girded himself. And after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the, with the towel. And the word really isn't towel. It's a servant robe that you put on, and he's, he's wearing a servant robe. And he gets down, and he washes their feet, and then he dries it off with what he's wearing. The servant robe, he dries their feet off with what he's wearing. He comes over to Peter. Verse 6. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? 
Notice he says, Lord, God, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, what I'm doing now you do not understand, but you'll know after this. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. If you're going to wash me, I'm a pretty dirty guy. Would you just go ahead and wash my head and wash my body? Because I need it. And Jesus said, no, you're already washed. You're already clean. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, and all your sins have been forgiven. In heaven, you are declared not guilty. What I'm doing right now, you're going to understand a little bit. You're still walking around on this earth. And heaven and earth came together in Jesus. And so he gives you salvation. And Peter, I've saved you through the blood of Jesus Christ, and you've received me. And, and you're not going to really understand now, but you need to know that I'm going to wash your hands and feet. Because when you walk in the dirt, when you walk on this world, what's this earth made out of? Dirt. So when you walk in the dirt, what happens to your feet? They get dirty. And when you work with your hands, what happens to your hands? They get dirty. And so Jesus said, although you are washed completely and your sins have been forgiven, you're still down here on earth. And so your hands and your feet need washed. And I'm going to wash them. You remember this pot? <clears throat> this black pot? They're just black pots. However, this black pot belongs to Jesus. It's his. He owns it. His name is carved in the bottom of this, and it says Jesus. But when we cook in this pot, it gets dirty. So we have to wash the pot ever so often and that's what he's telling Peter right here he's saying Peter you got to wash this pot ever so often you're still living on earth we've got a problem here we've got heaven and we've got earth we've got heaven living inside of earth what happens when we die what happens to this body I know we go to heaven but what happens to this body earth to earth ashes to ashes I mean we're, we're made out of dirt and so what God does is he gives us a great big box of Tide detergent. And he's going to wash us. Now, we're going to have to wash the skillet. We're going to have to wash our clothes. Um, I hate to ask this because there's some guys here, but how many of you always just put on the same clothes every day? I mean, it's easier. But after a while, they stink. So what do you have to do with them? You get this great big box of Tide detergent. You pour it in the washing machine, and the washing machine goes. The clothes go up, and the clothes go down. And then he drains all the water, and then what happens to it? He fills it back up with water, and then it drains all, and it spins. That's how he works with us. If you'd like to use the black pot, he takes a scrubber and he goes. We're going, oh, 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 oh. Then he rinses it out. And then he heats it up. Okay, now, I'd like for you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Go to your right. starting verse 25 how does God do this man look out that window it is still snowing like crazy the nice thing about snow is it covers up all our black I was walking down the hall coming to service today and Rick told me he said you know that white just covers up all that ugly it does one of these days we're going to be covered in in Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 25, but until then. Husbands, I want you to love your wives as Christ loved the church and died for her, gave himself for her, that he might sanctify 
and cleanse her with what? The washing of the water in the word. Now, what is this soap that God's going to be using on us? What is this soap God's going to be using on us? The word. This is word water. He's going to take us, and he's going to dip us in word water. The washing of the water in the word. Remember how they used to do it? On the scrubber? Then they put it in another great big number 10 wash tub, and that was the rinse water. And they'd take another, the other one, and every once in a while there'd be a stain in there. Every once in a while you can't get it off of this, and you have to scrub it and scrub it and scrub it. Now that's what God does with us. A lot of times it hurts. He scrubs and scrubs. But what does he use for soap? The word. If we read this, the more we read this, the more soap God uses. If you don't use enough soap, you have to really, really, really scrub it. This is stain remover. Now, if you use enough soap, you have a lot less scrubbing. What Christmas is all about is to make it as easy as possible on us so that we can get to where we're supposed to be. If we use enough of this on ourselves, there's a whole lot less scrubbing. Now, that doesn't mean that God's not going to heat us up because we need the Holy Spirit of God. And so he's going to use some of this training to open up our pores we call it heat and he's going to put the heat to us and it's going to open our pores and then he's going to pour the holy spirit upon us and in us because the fullness of the godhead includes the holy spirit and god wants us to have in us all the fullness of the godhead because when you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior who comes inside of you to live the Holy Spirit of God sent from the Lord Jesus and we have our name, his name written across us and it says that we belong to the Father if we put enough soap in this thing and we soak in this for a while, if you can't get that scrubbed out of that black pot, what do you do? well if it's going to be easier on you and you want to do a lot less scrubbing you fill it up with water, fill it up with soap and you let it sit in that black pot for several hours it softens the crud and then when you come back you don't have to scrub it near as hard and that's what God is telling us right here he's going to use some tide he's going to use some word water on us and the more we use the less scrubbing it takes now that doesn't mean he's not going to heat you up and he's going to not going to pour the oil in there He's going to do all of that. But this is the word water. And Peter says, Lord, if you're going to wash me, just wash all of me. And Jesus said, no, I've already washed you. But there's a few things on your feet and your hands that we're going to have to get off of, of you. And I would like to soak them for just a little bit. I want to soak them in the word water. Have you ever had one of your children come home with blue marker on their face? I, I don't know if you have boys or grandchildren grandsons yet but you will and if you've got boys they will come home with blue or black or red marker at some time or another on their face and you're going to have to get that off so what are you going to use well you're going to use water and a lot of soap and some scrubbing and that's what he's talking about, word water. But I want you to not to stop right there. I want you to go with me to Psalms. Lastly, I want you to go to Psalms chapter 37. And David, it's not that you didn't put that in your computer. It's that I didn't tell you. He's back there. <laughs> one of the few times you ever see him move really, really fast. 
Psalms chapter 37, verse 4. I want to go to point number three. Sometimes we just need to soak in the Word. Cow gone, take me away. Sometimes the Word isn't for washing and it's not for scrubbing. Sometimes the Word of God is just for relaxing on this earth. Because sometimes we need to relax. Because we're working hard. And it's hard living out there. And how in the world are we going to ever relax? Because we owe the electric bill, we owe the car payment, we owe the house payment. It is Christmas. We've got to buy Christmas presents. We've got to fight the crowd. And I, this is my favorite part, driving amongst the folks who don't live here. They don't know that the turn lane is on the left-hand side. I was driving down Sauncy the other day in the midst of that traffic. And, of course, it's just bumper to bumper, and they're all around me. And the guy next to me puts his blinker on. He's in the right-hand lane. I'm in the middle lane. He puts his left-hand blinker on because he's going to turn. And when he comes to the store that he wants to go in, he turned right in front of me. But don't worry, he had his blinker on. I did not act like a Christian. After God washed me, I still needed to relax a little bit. In Psalms chapter 37, we need to soak in the Word. This is soaking in the Word. Verse 5, I'm sorry, verse 4. Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord. He shall give you the desires of your heart. Now that Hebrew word, is an amazing word. You hardly ever see it. It doesn't fit real well in the Bible because what it means is to be soft, to be gentle, to relax. It means to delight. It means to indulge. Now there's not... This word is hardly used in the Bible, but it is used. And there are times when we need to pour the cow gone in the water and the bubble bath in there and whatever else you ladies use in that thing and put it in there and we need to slide into that hot water and we just need to lay there and relax for a few minutes. Take me away, cow gone where we're not thinking about anything but God. Now, here's what it says. Delight yourself also in in what? In the Lord. The Word is Yahweh. And He shall give you the desires of your heart. He gives you the desires of your heart as you're resting in Him This verse doesn't say as you're working for him. As you're working, working, working for God, then he sees and he blesses. And he does do that. That's not what this verse says. This verse says it's Christmas time. Jesus has come. God has come down in the form of a baby. And all the fullness of the Godhead is in him And heaven and earth have come together at this season, and we need to relax. This is the time to relax. This is the time that we rejoice. This is the time about babies. This is the time about fun. This is the time about family. And we need to just relax. We need to indulge. This is the time of year when we indulge. And we give gifts to one another. And you do not need to feel guilty about buying gifts. Now, don't overdo it. Everything in moderation, the Bible says. You need to feel good about eating sugar. Nehemiah, when they were rebuilding Jerusalem, they finally got to go back into the Promised Land. They finally got to get out of captivity. 
They got to go in the promised land. They're rebuilding Jerusalem. And Nehemiah says, okay, it's time to stop working today. I want you to eat of the fat and drink of the sweet. It's biblical. It's biblical. Eggnog. And right here is where it says it. I want you to delight yourself in the Lord. It's Christmas time. Jesus has come, and we need to rejoice. It is time to soak in the Word of God during this season and relax because Jesus has come. Isn't that exciting? Would you bow with me, please? Lord, thank you. Thank you for coming down here. Thank you for loving us rescuing us and saving us Lord thank you in the name of Jesus and thank you for letting us relax giving us the okay in fact commanding us to delight ourselves in you what a wonderful heavenly father what a mighty savior what a good God in Jesus name